Every day, we're faced with a deluge of information like this hamburger commercial on the screen. Well, now I'm hungry. What am I going to do? AI can come to the rescue. I need to get to the kitchen to cook a burger, but I also need to know what's in that hamburger. What's it going to do to me from a nutritional perspective? We've got a brand new tool in GPT-4V that can help. What you see there on the screen is a new technology that can take a picture of anything and it can tell you about it. I've asked the artificial intelligence to tell me what's in the hamburger and if it needs any additional information, just ask me. I've put in all the information that the AI asked me for and now it's going to come back and tell me, okay, here's what's in that hamburger. It's going to do a great job and it just did all of that from a picture and what I gave it in response to its prompts to me. I've checked this against other resources and it's correct. All right, now let's get down to the demonstration. I want to show you exactly how I did that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to OpenAI and log in. And now I've already logged in, so I'm here, and this is the main interface. First and foremost, make sure that you have ChatGPT+. This is a subscription service. It will cost you money every month, uh, but you do need it in order to do this particular um, this particular demonstration or, or use ChatGPT in this way. Uh, and this is again ChatGPT, what they're calling ChatGPT4V. Now, on the left hand side, you'll have all your chats. Uh, we're not going to need all those. We're just going to do a new chat. We need to make sure that we choose default. Default is the model that is set up to do what we call the multimodal input or multimedia input. In other words, we can paste a picture in there. So, if we come down here, I'm going to go and grab that picture and drop it. You can see here, add anything, GIF, JPEG, JPEG, ping. It really just wants pictures is what I've noticed right now. So this picture that I've just uploaded, I, I know you can't see that very well, but it's, it's that picture of a cheeseburger uh, from video. Uh, I actually made this one, so it was, a, it was very yummy. So next we're going to put in the prompt. And we're going to keep it very basic because I really want you to see what the AI is capable of. And so... It says here, what is the nutrition of this? If you need additional information, ask me. Very, very simple. Uh, I haven't told it what's in the picture. I haven't told it how to analyze the picture. And so let's go. So I'm gonna pop that picture up there. There we go. And now it's gonna to start to actually do the output or the predictive, uh, it, it's predicting what it thinks in, is in the hamburger. So it shows a delicious looking burger. Thank you, ChatGPT. I made that one. Uh, to estimate the nutritional content of the burger, I'll need some more specifics. What type of meat or meat substitute is this? And it's approximate weight. It's 80, okay, sorry. It's 80, 20, ground beef, and it's uh, three ounces. Okay, number two. Are there any condiments or sauces? Yes, barbecue sauce. Uh, grilled onions, uh, pickles. Think about putting anything else on that burger. Yeah, a slice of cheese. Oh, it's asking me separately about the cheese. Uh, so number three, that's cheddar cheese. Yummy. Uh, one slice. I have no idea how much that weighed, so we'll just say one slice. Number four, any additional toppings or ingredients inside the burger that are not visible. No, but uh, we did have a tomato, so let's put that on there. Nope. And number five, the type and size of bun. Uh, normal size brioche. So you'll notice I'm not being very specific, and it's okay, because we don't have to tell the AI every little thing, and that's what's really fun about this. It's totally different from using a normal nutrition app in this case. So let's go ahead and punch that in and let's see what the rough estimate is. So again, while we're waiting, we've added a picture. Well, we chose a model, we added a picture, we put in a very basic prompt, really, really basic. And now it's gonna go ahead and thank me for providing the details, and it's gonna give us what it calls a rough estimate of the nutritional content based on the information, and most importantly, the photo. Calories, 230. Okay, so it's gonna break it down by ingredient. So we've got 80-20 ground beef at 3 ounces, breaking down all the macronutrients. Oh, I have another question. Uh, as this gets finished, I'll, I'll ask another question. 
I, I didn't even think to do this before, so we'll call it a little bonus uh, coming on here. So we've got barbecue sauce. That's right, about a tablespoon. If I remember, that's probably about what I put on there. Uh, didn't want it to overpower the burger. Those are smash burgers, by the way, which are one of my kids' favorites. Uh, they generate a lot of uh, fire and such on the grill. My kids call them fire burgers. So it's really fun. There's a pickle, one medium-sized pickle. Fair enough. I don't know that there was a whole pickle on there, but I think it's okay because there's not much to a pickle. Uh, there's a tomato. I also grew that tomato in my own garden. That is a beefsteak heirloom tomato. And man, they were good this year. So I've only got two left from the garden here in October. So I'm planning on enjoying those. Um, they've been awesome on sandwiches and as, um, as uh, salads. Cheddar cheese. Now look, you'll notice GPT-4 is not fast. That's just a thing right now. Um, there's not much we can do about that. So you don't want to do this if you're in a hurry at the traffic light. But at the same time, it is pretty thorough. So now what we've got is the estimated nutrition, uh, calories 603, fat 33, protein 31.5, and carbs are 43 grams. So what this means, there's, there's a bunch of fun things we can do now. Um, uh, break the macronutrients down by calories as well, please. So how many calories are fat? How many calories are protein? How many calories are carbs? If you know the, if you know the uh, formula, it's eight times 33, four times 31.5 and four times 43. I'm just being a little lazy and I'm making the machine do the work. So let's see what it comes up with. And then I want one more question. I'm going to untype the question, but I can't even hit enter until it's done generating. So I'm going to go ahead and type the question while we wait and you can see the things coming through and it's actually educating us now on what I just told you, fat, nine calories per gram. Uh, Carbohydrates will be four calories per gram and protein will also be four calories per gram. But we also want to know, um, can you provide a micronutrient profile for this food as well, please? What are the key vitamins, minerals, and any other things I should know to decide if this is good for me. Oh gosh, every time I do this, I think of other things. I've just thought of another really cool question. I'm doing this real time here, um, you know, train, train of thought. So uh, I've just thought of something else that I wanna show you. It's gonna be really cool. It's inspired by a friend of mine, Miles, who has a child who's a type one diabetic. So I will, I will um, show you that in just a second. That is worth hanging on for. So hang on. Here we go. Uh, we're talking about food allergies and things like that and uh, diabetic needs. So can you provide a micronutrient profile for the food as well? What are the key vitamins, minerals, and any other things I should know to decide if this food is good for me? Well, here it goes. Let's get a general overview of the micronutrients typically found in the components of the burger. I already know my next question, so I'm going to queue it up while we wait for this. Um, my next question is... Would this be a good food for a type one diabetic or someone with uh, someone with, oh gosh, what is it? Um, let's go with a food allergy, like nut allergies. Okay. It, look, I already know the answer, but that's not the point. We're going to, now listen. Really important disclaimer, don't lean on something like ChatGPT solely for medical advice. It's really important that you get that checked by a human being. However, if you know a bit, this can really be a boost and it can also be a wonderful way if you don't know, say you had a type one diabetic coming over for dinner uh, or someone who might have food allergies coming over for dinner, you can run your menu through here by just taking a picture of all the food and then asking it, is there anything here who might hurt my guest? What a great, great use case for this technology. And that's reasonable because you're not making a medical diagnosis. But hey, if you have medical questions, go see your doctor. All right, so here we go. What do we got? Iron, zinc, B vitamins, selenium, sodium, sugar, vitamin C, biotin, manganese, sodium, vitamin K. Really cool. And it's breaking it down 
ingredient by ingredient. So I guess if it turns out I wanted to reduce the sodium, or maybe I have a reason to do that from a blood pressure perspective, I could take the pickles out, right? But look at that. Did you know that vitamin K is important for blood clotting? And that is part of pickles? I had no idea. That's really cool. So um, let's, let's, uh, let's keep going. Come on, chat GPT-4. You can do it. Where are we? We're on the cheese. Are we almost done? Let's go back up here and look. Cheese, bun. Yeah, we're almost done. So the brioche bun has folate. That's really cool. Iron in smaller amounts compared to the beef. Now, it's interesting. It did not choose... Gosh, there's so many cool things I could show you. It did not choose to tell me approximately how much. It only told me what it is and it's in there. So, wow, at some point I will have to stop this video, but this gives me a great idea for the next prompt. So um, I'm going to show you uh, what we could do. So now look, it's actually giving us some other considerations. Sodium can make this burger relatively high in sodium, which could be a problem. Thank you for taking care of me. Saturated fats, depending on how you feel about that, and added sugars. But look, we didn't put that much barbecue sauce in there. It was like one tablespoon. I think we're going to be okay. So I think we're at the end of that one. Super, super cool. Uh, and I got a network error. Gosh, you know, when I do these demos and this kind of stuff happens, I, I just sort of leave it in the video. I want you to see that this technology is not perfect yet, but we got what we asked for and we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and hit regenerate. Here's what you would do in that case. I don't need it to redo all that, but I hit regenerate. I say stop. This means you are going to retain my conversation. I'm just going to have to put in that last question again. So would this be a good food for a type 1? diabetic or for someone with nut allergies, right? Two different things and message and conversation not found. Okay. This would be a total showstopper for a lot of folks. So it has completely forgotten where we are. I did not script this. I had no idea it was going to happen. So what do we do? What do we do? So let's click regenerate. We got nothing, right? So we're completely dead in the water now. That means we've got to start over. Is this food good for a type 1 diabetic? And let's just leave it, um, and let's leave it that, that straightforward. So we're starting over, remember? It doesn't know any of that stuff from the previous conversation. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so this is super cool. It's actually going to go through and it's going to um, figure out exactly what we were talking about before, but with maybe a little bit less detail because we drove the machine to choose the detail. Meat patty, cheese and condiments. I'll tell you what, it's going pretty slow today. Uh, this model, this default model, I feel like it got faster for a while and now it's slow again. But for a type 1 diabetic, it's important that we consider these things. Any type 1 diabetic or type 2 diabetic out there knows this. But my point was, this is helpful for the friends of type 1 or type 2 diabetics. We can learn and we can better, uh, better work uh, with our food to know what to do to share uh, and to share in a safe way. So I think that's really important, um, really important to consider when you have a dinner guest over, especially. So here we go. All good advice. And I just think that's a great place uh, to wind up this video today. Um, if you enjoyed this content, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you. Uh, one of the things that really, really helps me, I'm trying really hard to get um, up to that sort of thousand subscribers level. And, um, and it's been an amazing journey since last October when I relaunched this channel. So if you liked this, please do me a favor and uh, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to know when I release more content, hit the notification button. 
and YouTube will be so kind as to let you know when I put new content out. All right. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day wherever you are, and I will see you soon.